In today's tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the raw footage I used to make a cinemagraph and how to use Adobe Stock to add extra animation on top of what we shot in camera. So this is the cinemagraph we're going to be creating today. And uh, it's comprised of a few different things we shot in camera and some uh, visual effects overlaid on top of it using some stock imagery. So this is the original raw footage from the red camera. Just scrubbing through it here as you can see all the things we captured and a little behind the scenes shot. So that's me setting up the shot of this car and here is the final camera angle and that's me operating the fan. So we use a wind machine to really get some strong wind on the areas where we need it. It's very it's directional, you can control it, you can pulse it, super useful for cinemagraph. So I'm aiming it there at the sleeve, I'll aim it up at his collar. So we're zooming in here on his sleeve and you can just see the motion we're capturing it. This is just the raw footage. One thing that's really important with cinemagraphs is you can adjust the frame rate at which you record. So I recorded this at about 48 frames a second, you can see. And what that means is it's recording in double time. So when you play it back on a 24 frames per second timeline, the motion is going to be slowed down. So it's a bit more romantic. So we do it for anything from hair to cloth, you shoot it at 48 or 60 or even higher frames per second, everything just comes out a lot, a lot nicer. So here we have the cinemagraph in terms of what we shot on camera. These are the various parts. We captured all these separately. So the steering and sleeve, collar, and his head. So all three of those are separate animation plates that we call them. So sometimes when making cinemagraphs, you'll create different loops and inevitably they'll end up at different lengths. So some of the loops I have here are 50 frames and the one we're looking at is about 113. So to get around that, we use a plugin called Twixtor, which is a really great plugin. It's used for slowing down or speeding up uh, video and it does it really, really well. So what we're going to do is use Twixtor to change the speed of this and use the frame method, not the percentage. Percentage, you can specify if you want it to be 150% and or 200% and it'll speed it up. But what we're going to do is put a keyframe here at the beginning at frame zero and then another at the end uh, with frame 112, which is the length of this comp or where the keyframe needs to be. So then we just take this keyframe at the end and we drag it down to 50, which is where we need it to be. That's going to be the length of the other loops. And now this one, you'll see the Twix store has remapped everything to be this length. So it's kind of just like squishing the whole thing down, but it interpolates the frames really nicely and just does a really great job at it. So now it's playing back and if you look at the time code in the bottom left, you'll see that it's all crazy, but that's because it's being sped up uh, to 50 frames exactly where we need it to be to line up with all the other clips. So now I have all the parts that we shot in camera here in a loop and I want to start focusing on the areas in the reflection. So I'm going to go to Adobe Stock to search clouds and see what I can find. So I like this one, it has nice contrast between uh, the sky and the clouds, and I think it's gonna work great for what we need. So bring it over into After Effects and make a new comp. So what I'm gonna do first is crop it down to something that's a little bit more video friendly. And I'll just choose 1080p. And what I'm doing here is positioning it into a, a way that I'm gonna animate it later on. So drop a little keyframe there, uh, change the length of my comp down to uh, actually 100 because I need it to loop into itself. We'll get to that next. 
So I have my first keyframe, and then I go to the end and drag it down over here so it has some nice up, down, side to side motion like that. And that's gonna be the basis for our looping animation.